What's up, guys? Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. I uh, I wanted to kind of talk about who I am and what I'm doing with this. Scott. Whoa, no touchy. No touchy. No touch. YouTube channel. And it's like the the thing that people I say, I mean, I've, I've even had close friends uh, say, you know, what's your niche, you know? What is it that you're going to go after, you know, in that, in that sense? <clears throat> and if you look at it that way, it almost becomes about you. So you have to figure out what you're good at. And you have to figure out what you're going to do with what you can do. And it limits you in a way because now you, you try to figure out the best in you so you can give that to people. But then you start seeing other people do the things that you feel like you're supposed to do. And then the comparison game begins. <clears throat> and I've asked the question, what makes you different than anybody else? And the answer is pretty much nothing. I mean, other than the fact that you don't look like another person that is making videos or recording content and trying to help people or do something. There's somebody out there that's, that's doing what you're doing or wanting to do, and they're probably going to do it better than you. It's just, and then there's a person that's going to be doing it better than that person. And it's, it, it's, the comparison game becomes real crazy. And it's like, why would I do that if so-and-so is already doing it? And I, I thought the same thing last night. Uh, I was watching a, a podcast or slash YouTube video with Justin Morrison, I believe that's his name. <laughs> and the guy is like a Holy Ghost gangster, man. What? And there's, I don't have it. I don't know how to describe it. The, the dude's awesome. Just the way he, he brings greater perspective through scripture and uh, wisdom that he's gained throughout all of his years of, of being in ministry. Um, it's just amazing to watch him. And I don't have the years of ministry that he has, but I have him. And then I have myself wanting to make a difference. So now I lean on what he's saying. Then I lean on the scripture and say, okay, God, what's your perspective for, for, the, for the audience that I have? There's nothing that makes me greater than Preston, Mr. Pre Pastor Preston Morris. There's nothing, even in the carnality part portion of it. But one thing that he did say is that every person has a call of God in their life. And because of that call, that distinguishes you between the other person. Because what God called one person for, he it's not the calling will never be the same for another person. So you are distinguished between the callings the call of God on your life for whatever purpose God has intended it for. And so you could sound the same. You could almost look the same. You can even have the same platforms, but you're different. And that's, that's the distinction. God's called you to a thing. And I wouldn't call it a niche either because if the God of the universe calls you, then that's a pretty great calling. Put you on hold for a second. Yeah! Woo! Right? The God of the world, you know, the creator of all of the universe gave you a calling. That's pretty impressive, right? And the, and the, and the thing is, is God did that before the foundation of the world. And so, God had chosen, has chosen us before the foundations. Before we ever breathed the breath and knew anything, God chose us. And so, I'm saying all that to say... Whenever you're trying to do anything in life, the comparison game is absolutely ridiculous. I'm not so-and-so. You know, obviously basketball players compare themselves to LeBron James or Michael Jordan or Allen Iverson or uh, Dennis Rodman or Scottie Pippen or uh, Akeem Abdul-Jabbar, uh, you know, uh, Shaquille O'Neal. You compare yourself to guys that were incredible, that, that still play, that are still incredible and you're like man I'll never be that well you're right 
you're probably right. You'll never be that, but you'll be you. But the point that I'm trying to make is we can compare ourselves until we don't do anything. And that's what we don't need. It's okay to look at somebody else and be challenged to be better at anything. And that's wonderful because you want to be the best that you can be to help people, you know? But you don't want to compare yourself to the point where you don't do anything. Because the world needs you. And you say, well, how do you know the world needs me? Well, because if God put a calling on your life, then there's a reason for that. Now, you have to be anointed and you have to be equipped to do those things. But God does that too. And you think if God of the world, the universe, put a calling on your life, you don't think he would, he would anoint you and prepare you to go do what he's called you to do? That's just not how God works. And so I just wanted to be an encouragement to somebody and say, step out in faith and stop comparing yourself to another preacher. Stop comparing yourself to another YouTuber. Stop comparing yourself to another business leader. Stop comparing yourself to a business owner. Stop comparing yourself to a family member. Whatever it is, step out and do it. If God's put a call of God in your life, notice the call, acknowledge it, and then lean into it and say, okay, God, how could you, how are you going to equip me and anoint me so that I can be the best me that you've made me to be? And I'm going to tell you this. There are times that I felt like I have missed it because of the choices that I've made and the reaction that I received from my peers. And some of the choices that I made were terrible choices. I'm sorry. Would you please still be my friend? And yes, God could have given up on me, but that's not how God's callings work. You know, his gifts and his callings are without repentance. And that's what he does. And so, um, like, don't ever think it's too late to do anything. And I'm going to say this. I'm grateful that I'm different than I was. And it's not that I'm grateful that I made mistakes. I'm grateful that I learned from the mistakes. But I'm thankful, looking back now, that I'm not the same preacher that I would used to be. Because I would have been a cookie-cutter preacher who would have got a rise out of congregations but left them without any change. And and I, 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 there's no way, knowing what I know now, that I could ever do that. Knowing that God has a plan for everybody, and knowing that I could have hyped them up and could have had a good time and could have gotten paid for it and could have traveled the world and, and been an evangelist and probably been super effective and people could have come to know God. And that's absolutely fantastic. But to know that God has changed me in a way that now I feel like I'm more equipped and anointed to do his work the way he wants me to do it, not the way others want me to do it. I'm so grateful. So grateful. So be encouraged. And uh, if you feel led to do anything, like just step out. Step out in faith. Figure out a way to lean into the calling of God on your life, whether that be through prayer, through fasting, through reading of the word and understanding your calling, whatever it is, lean into it until a door opens. When the door opens, make sure it's of God because because your gifts will make room for other people to acknowledge it. and it seems like an open door. Sometimes it is not. But just check, check with the Holy Ghost and make sure that you are walking in what he's called you to walk in and just stay there. Lean in and love on him. So, anyways, I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this thought. Um, if you can, like and subscribe if you if you made it this far. Uh, most people only make it to through about three minutes of my videos, so you probably didn't see this. <laughs> but if you did, give me a thumbs up. Love you guys.